In today's agricultural world, the use of pesticides is an important element in the process of growing. And because of this, the proper use of a respirator is an important part of every agricultural worker's job. In this program, we will show you how to select the proper respirator for the job, demonstrate how to test for proper fit, describe maintenance procedures, and identify respirator storage procedures. All these steps are vitally important so that both employers and employees can breathe easy. Oregon law requires that employers must provide respirators when necessary for the protection of an employee's health. It is the employer's responsibility to provide a NIOSH-approved respirator for each situation a respirator is required and to set up a respiratory protective program that includes training in all aspects of respirator use. The first step in any respirator program is to make sure that each employee required to wear a respirator fills out a medical history questionnaire written with the assistance of a local physician or company doctor. The employee must be physically able to perform the assigned work while using the respirator equipment. Victor, why do you think it's important that we use respirators? When using pesticides in agricultural applications, it is not feasible to get rid of all contaminated air through engineering controls, such as fans or ventilation systems. Therefore, to protect employees from harmful dust, fogs, fumes, mists, gases, smokes, sprays, or vapors, a respirator must be worn. A pesticide can poison or injure you if you get it into your eyes, breathe it, swallow it, or get it on your skin. When you handle pesticides or work in areas where they've been applied, wash your hands with soap and water every time you take a break. If you don't, you may wipe pesticides that are on your hands or face into your mouth or eyes. Diseases caused by airborne contaminants may take years to develop, so it is very important to follow proper respirator selection and fit procedures now. Today we're going to look at four different types of respirators that are used. For the purposes of this video, we are going to look at four different types of respirators. The first is the dust mask. It offers protection from small particles in the air. The dust mask covers the nose and mouth to filter out dusts, mists, powders, and particles. The level of protection offered by the dust mask is limited. The half-face respirator uses filters and sometimes chemical cartridges to remove dusts and mists and to absorb harmful vapors or gases. These chemical canisters and filters must be checked regularly and replaced as often as your working environment requires. Like the half-face respirator, the full-face respirator uses chemical cartridges and filters to protect you from harmful substances. It offers added protection for the eyes from spray chemicals. A helmet respirator, sometimes called a hood respirator, is used when workers are subject to chemicals and substances dripping on them from above. The respirators have their own air supply. Another reason for using a NIOSH-approved helmet respirator is the ease of obtaining a proper fit. The seal is made around the neck, not the face. This allows a good fit for people who may have facial hair or other conditions affecting the proper fit of another kind of respirator. It is the employer's responsibility to choose the proper respirator and filters for their workers. The choice is based on the task to be accomplished and the exposure to contaminants. However, it is very important that you, the employee, take responsibility for your own health and safety. During training on the selection and use of respirators, Ask your employer about anything you don't understand. Handle the respirator and become familiar with its parts and how they work. Remember, it is your health at risk. Now we're going to take a look at the different types of filters that are used on the respirators. The filter is what catches the particles of dust, fumes, mists, or vapors from the product being used. It is the barrier between you and the chemical being applied. Without it, you are not protected. Because it is your health, it is important that you understand how filters are organized. 
Filters are organized into color codes. Each color filter is designed for different uses. Again, it is the employer's responsibility to provide the proper filters, but you need to make sure you understand the color system also. For example, a black colored filter is for protection from organic vapors, such as pesticides. For further protection from particles, dust, and mists, you may also need a pre-filter. Remember, it is also your responsibility to make sure you are using the right filters for the job. So take the time to check each filter. Filters need to be changed on a regular basis. How often is based on the length of time they are used and the type of contaminant they are protecting you from. You, the employee, need to be aware when a filter is not working. You will know it is not working when breathing is difficult or you smell or taste the product being used. If it is not working, it is time to change the filter immediately. Okay, now let's go through the procedure for donning or putting on the respirators. Ramon, could you help me with this procedure, please? We'll start off with a dust mask. Place the mask over your nose and chin and pull the strap over your head. Then mold the nose piece to your nose. Before donning a respirator, it is important to always do an inspection of the parts to make sure it is working properly. Make sure that the filters are correct and snug in place. Are all the valves in place and in working order? Look at the face seal. Is it clean? Are there any tears or distortions? Check the straps. Are they in good shape? And are all buckles working properly? When putting on the half-face respirator, always work from the bottom up. First, place the chin strap around your neck. Then put the chin cup firmly under your chin and move the strap into place. Now place the face piece over your nose and make sure the face seal is snug. Then adjust the straps for a comfortable fit. The fit should be snug, but not so tight as to distort the face piece or wrinkle your skin. When donning the full face respirator, follow the same inspection procedure as just described. Also, check to make sure the face shield is not cracked. As with the half face respirator, place the chin strap around the neck, then position the face piece over your face and the head straps over your head. Make sure all the straps are adjusted properly. The effectiveness of a respirator depends on a proper fit, meaning the seal between the face piece and your face must have no air leaks. Several things can cause a bad seal or air leakage. Beards, heavy sideburns, scars, facial shape, dentures, and glasses may make it very difficult to get a good seal. In these cases, you may need to shave your beard, take off your glasses, or use a different type of respirator. Before donning the NIOSH-approved helmet respirator, inspect it to make sure there are no deep scratches, cuts, or discoloration on the helmet. Make sure the visor is properly installed. Check the face seal for wear and the breathing tube for holes, cracks, and breaks. And finally, make sure there is a sufficient supply of air flowing through the system. To properly don the helmet respirator, place the turbo unit against your lower back with the breathing tube extending upward. Fasten the belt around your waist at the front so the turbo unit rests comfortably and securely against your lower back. Plug the turbo unit into a fully charged battery pack and attach the battery pack to the belt. As with all respirators, refer to the manufacturer's instructions for specific procedures on inspection and donning. Once the respirator that you have chosen is on and feels comfortable, move your head up and down and side to side to make sure the fit is good and maintains the seal in all positions. Not all sizes and brands of respirators fit everyone. If you feel that the fit is poor, try another size or brand. Don't settle for a respirator that fits poorly. 
Once the best possible fit is achieved, there are two specific tests that you should do every time you put on a respirator. The first is called the negative pressure test. To perform a negative pressure test, cover the air inlets of the respirator and inhale slightly, then hold your breath for a few seconds. If there is a proper fit, the nose piece of the respirator should collapse a little bit. If you feel or hear air coming in around the face piece, then you don't have a good fit and it needs to be adjusted. The most common place for leaks is around the nose and chin. The second test is called the positive pressure test. To perform the positive pressure test, block the exhaust valve of the respirator with your hand, then blow out slightly. The face piece should bulge slightly and there should be no leaks. In addition to doing the negative and positive pressure tests every time the respirator is used, there is another test that needs to be done on a periodic basis. An atmosphere test uses a substance such as an irritant smoke to test the fit of a respirator. While someone holds the tube near the respirator, you need to move your head up and down and side to side and make verbal noise such as counting. If you are affected by the smoke, then there is a leak. This test will be done when you are first assigned the respirator. Remember, you, the employee, need to be responsible for your own health. You need to be aware of how your respirator works and fits. And you need to take steps to correct a problem if there is one. When you are working in situations that require a respirator, it is your employer's responsibility to provide you with the proper respiratory protection, even in situations where your exposure to respiratory health risks may seem minimal. It is imperative that you take responsibility to use the equipment properly. As you were shown during your training, it is very important to inspect your respirator before putting it on. Once you have it in place and have a good fit, Remember to do a negative and positive pressure test. These tests should be done each time you put on a respirator before you go to work. If you ever smell the product you are applying, immediately stop what you are doing and leave the work area. Readjust your respirator to correct the fit and do another negative and positive pressure test. If you believe the filters need to be changed, do so right away. Do not wait until you have completed the job. If you don't change them, you are just exposing yourself to danger. Always go through the proper donning and fit test procedures before using any respirator. As demonstrated here, the helmet respirator protects you from splashing and spraying pesticides that come from above. In addition to doing a fit test, other things to be aware of include making sure the breathing tube doesn't get twisted or damaged while working, that your battery is fully charged and well maintained, and that the filters you use are proper for the job. As with the other respirators, if you ever smell contaminated air while working, leave the work area and either change the filters or inspect the unit for what is causing the leak. It is very important that you get into the habit of always inspecting your respirator before using it and doing a positive and negative pressure test before entering the work area. If a respirator doesn't fit right or if it isn't working properly because of worn parts, you are not being protected from injury or illness. Remember, it is your health on the line. After every use, your respirator needs to be cleaned and disinfected. The first step is to remove the cartridges or filters from the face piece. They must not be washed. These cartridges and or filters have been used and are contaminated. Cartridges need to be changed as required by your employer. However, the best way to handle used cartridges is to dispose of them and replace them with new ones. After handling them, you need to wash your hands. If the cartridges are going to be reused, they must be stored separate from the respirator. Next, place the face piece in a cleaning disinfectant solution and scrub gently with a cloth or soft brush. Make sure all foreign material is removed from the surfaces of the rubber exhaust valve, 
the valve seats, and the face pieces. Then rinse it in clean, warm water and allow to air dry before storing. Take special care that the face piece is kept in its natural shape. After the respirator is dry, place it in a clean, resealable container with your name on it. Then store the respirator in a locker or cabinet that is reserved for this purpose. They must not be stored in the chemical storage area. In cases where more than one person is using the same respirator, it is a good idea to mark who is the last person to use and clean the respirator and when. It is for your own health and safety that you are responsible for the proper cleaning and storage of your respirator. Your employer will be checking to see if it is done correctly. But remember, a respirator that isn't cared for properly may eventually fail to protect you and put your health at risk. Your respirator is what will keep you safe as you work. Take good care of it and it will protect you. Only you can take full responsibility for your health. If you follow the steps outlined in this program, you can be sure that you'll breathe easy. Thank you.